But now we're going to be getting our next speaker up. Okay. Our next speaker for this, this morning is Mr. Roy McLean. Mr. Roy McLean is the president and CEO of One Cooperative Insurance System of the Philippines Life and General Insurance and has been the leading light builder, founder, turnaround artist, and trailblazer in the cooperative movement for more than three decades. Being also founding president of Co-op Health, the Philippines' first ever co-op HMO, he has also worked on the co-op banking, such as the recently consolidated One Co-op Bank, OCB, and Network Consolidated Cooperative Bank, where he is the treasurer, I now one CISP with its almost 2,000 member co-ops and more than 1 million individual members and is the very first cooperative and insurer actively adopting the Lightning Payment Network to accelerate financial inclusion and freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome for Mr. Roy McLeod. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chris. We met at the airport uh, two days ago, and he didn't know that I would be here. Just smiled at him, and he was surprised when I saw him yesterday. But anyway, uh, you maybe you're surprised why a cooperative is here in the Bitcoin retreat. But there are a lot of parallels between Bitcoiners and cooperative advocates. Because the cooperative advocates only want a fair and just economic and social system. Born at the same time, during crisis, during crisis of the Industrial Revolution in England, just like what Lyman had shown you yesterday, the wheelbarrow guys, they're the ones who built the start of the cooperative movement all over the, all over the world. What the cop movement needs is a monetary system that can protect their gains. And I think Bitcoin can provide the cooperatives with that monetary system. So let's start. So we are a cooperative insurers. We insure cooperatives and members of cooperatives all over the country. It's not government. It's not private business, it's a cooperative enterprise. We are a member of an alliance all over the world. It is a people-centered enterprise owned, controlled, and run by and for their members to realize their common economic, social, and cultural needs and aspirations. Is there any difference between Bitcoiners? None. Almost the same. We want to control and run ourselves. There are about 18,857 cooperatives in the country. And in this province alone, the province of Aklan, that uh, Spark, Boracay, or Malay is part, there are 159 cooperatives. So that's the challenge for Pouch. Only even in just in Aklan, you have a market. There are about 10,000 in Luzon, 3,471 in Visayas, and 5,073 in Mindanao. And I will tell you, the biggest community-based cooperative in the country, first community cooperative is based in Mindanao. It has 125 offices and almost 400,000 members. And they are here. Let's give them a big hand. The chair and the CEO is here. I, just, I told my good friend, who is also a, a former director of FIGO, if I need to drop these this guys in Boracay, we will drop them so they know about Bitcoin. March is a general assembly meeting of cooperatives. In private, they call it stockholders meeting. We call it general assembly. Ethan, are you here? 
These are your potential users. And they come for free. They, they unlike politicians who need to pay them to go to meetings, they come for free, they spend for their own to attend meetings so they'll know what's happening to their cooperative. We have been 49 years uh, in existence. We hope and we believe that prosperous, inclusive, and resilient Philippines is a cooperative Philippines. We have about 4,594 4, cooperatives as of December 2022. 24% market penetration uh, among the cooperatives in the country. So this is how we distribute it. It's almost even. This is some of the financial data that we have. For CISP alone, we have 1.8 million policyholders, potential users of the Lightning Network and savers of Bitcoin. CISP paid 814 million pesos in claims, $15 million. 3.2 billion in assets or 72 billion in dollars. 161 million in surplus. We don't call it income. We call it surplus. It's uh, it's a surplus because the services that you pay, there is extra, so we give it back to the members. So it's not income. It's about $3 million. Imagine if CISP is not existing and these figures will go to the private sector. Only 10% of the total population owns 90% of the wealth of the Philippines. That's the disparity between the poor and the rich. Sabi nila, you need 1.2 million pesos annual income to be happy. So, lahat tayo dito malungkot. That's because it's 100,000 pesos a month as income to be happy. Of course, being happy is relative. Just with my wife, I am happy the happiest. In the field in, in the cooperative movement, we divide economic system from public and private. Public is government. Private is the private sector that sucks the blood of the top of the population. Sorry. <laughs> cooperative is the third path. It's the great third path. Why? Because it aims to get a fair and just economic system. It doesn't profit. It only provides service to generate surplus and give it back to its members. So we choose the great third path. Now there is a capitalist among you guys. That's a one move. Okay, what is the benefits of the third path? There's a, uh, the last presenter presented the innate problems of the, of the private or the capitalist world uh, in a free market. But for the third path, access to capital, customers' guidance, cooperatives provide easier access to history. Why? Because Members contribute, so you have the capital. Members use the service, so you have the customers. Because you own the enterprise, you provide guidance to one another. 
Unlike in private enterprises, it's simple. You optimize, you maximize profit. We don't care if you are satisfied or not. So right now, this book thing is coined by the military. Now it's being used by business. So for entrepreneurs and small businesses, cooperatives for the, offer the great third path because cooperatives bring mutual interest together with shared investments, risk and benefit, offering a more competitive, stable, and community-centric alternative to private ventures. You can just imagine first community cooperative with almost 400,000 members. These are your customers. Simple. They are the provide and services. So we choose the great third path. Now it's a question of how could Bitcoin put co-ops in front of the digital revolution? They were born 200 years apart. But they were able to meet on this decade. So how could Bitcoin help the cooperatives? They were born in crisis and they exist to serve their members or the Bitcoin holders. That's the cooperative. This is Bitcoin. It will fuel the cooperatives should they meet and work together. Once CISP activates the Philippines, First cooperative that adopted the Lightning Network. We have been using it. Just like today, we paid something from the Iron Grid here. So it's the first among cooperatives. Oh. <laughs> This is the next generation. Eva, call pain. Big time. Cooperative banks is the next settlement banks. So all next year, let's take up the cooperative banks and let make the grassroots benefit from bitcoins and let the cooperative flourish to have the greater fun. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. So one thing I got out of that, you know, is the fact that if you look at the word co-op and Bitcoin, they're practically synonymous and interchangeable. Everything you said is exactly what Bitcoin is, is that it's owned by the people, for the people, for the benefit of the people. And that's what I loved about that talk. And uh, wow, it'll change a lot of lives, especially in the Philippines. 